Welcome to our latest van tour. We are already inside the van because it is super windy and cold out today. So we just wanted to start here in the van. Welcome to van build number 23, our beach house layout with a little bit of a different style. You'll see the stained window frames right here. We have stained trim throughout this van, really a different style. And our client trusted us to kind of make that call. And I'm so excited about how this all came together to show people a little bit different style. A lot of our clients come to us wanting what they've seen before. So a lot of clients want the all white ceiling, all white walls, all white cabinets. So we love when clients like to branch out and do something different. As always, the clients still pick all of the finishes, the fabric, the countertop color, backsplash for the tile. This van has a full tile bathroom, so he picked that tile as well. The only decision that we actually made in this one was the stained poplar trim and window frames, which I think looks so good. But as always, our clients pick all of their own finishes. Now, not only does this van look awesome, different kind of style for us, it is a little more like retro to me, which I like. I think it turned out beautifully. But this van kicks some butt when it comes to the electrical system. We have a Dometic 12 volt air conditioner. We have the Dometic powered awning. We have a lot of fun features on this van still that make it not only beautiful, but very functional, which you guys know we are all about. So because we're already here in the back, let's just get started back here. Our typical convertible table bed area with, this is not the Lagoon, it's a different brand because this van, we kind of went with the black and gold theme, so we wanted to stick with a black pedestal down here. Uh, we have our nice bamboo table, and we'll show you guys later, we actually, for our fill-in piece that completes the bed, it's actually on a hinge, so it folds and per fits perfectly into the front closet area. A little addition that we just recently made to make things easier for clients. We did make this bed a little bit longer at 76 inches instead of our standard 72 inches because our client is 6'2", so we wanted to make sure he had a little bit more length. We are in a 170 extended sprinter, I guess I should mention that, in this van because we are not starting on the, in the outside, we're starting on the inside. I forgot to mention what we're even in. <laughs> We are in a 170 extended 3500 Mercedes Sprinter. Um, this is actually a super single. So even though it's a, a 3500, it does not have a dually. It has a super single wheel. That is something they got rid of this year. This is a 2022. Um, so you can't really get these anymore. But it is actually really cool because the wheel wells aren't quite as big in our back bench area. So our plumbing and electrical system still worked perfectly in here. This is the blue gray color, as you can see on the back doors here. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the bed area. So now we'll move forward to our very large dresser cabinet. So our dresser cabinet over on the driver's side, we have 130 liter isotherm fridge very large, very nice. And then he still has three really good sized drawers for storage. Above that, we've got our little max air vent fan remote control that controls the vent fan in the front. And then this one single switch in the back controls just one of the lights in the rear. This is like a bedtime light so that you don't have to go all the way up to the sliding door to turn off the other lights. This one you could switch on before bed, turn off your main ones in the front. And then that way when you're in bed, it's an easy, you know, switch right here. It is dimmable too, so when it's nighttime, you don't have to have super bright light. These are way brighter than you think at night, so we always love giving that option of just having one on so you're not blasting yourself with all the lights on the ceiling. We have upper cabinets all throughout, tons of storage in this one, just super functional to have that overhead upper cabinet storage. Not much more than that to say in one of the upper cabinets. We do have all of our electrical controls, so that is how you turn on your inverter, see how much fresh water you have, see how much water is in your gray water tanks underneath the van. So we'll get more into that whole control system later on in this video, Alex will go through it, but 
we do like having that concealed in an upper cabinet. So number one, you don't have all these switches out on the wall that are shining bright lights in your face when you're sleeping. I don't know about you guys, but I need a black room when I am asleep and I don't want like bright blue LED lights shining in my face all night. So that is why we put that in an upper cabinet. Super easy to get to, but it's not blaring in your face all night. Then we have our kitchen. We have on both sides the nice solid surface Corian countertops in this black color, which I think just ties in beautifully with his custom milled poplar ceiling with like the black in between the slots. Kind of ties in with that beautifully. I think the design turned out really well in this. We haven't done black countertops before, but I really like it. And then a fun backsplash that just kind of ties in all the colors throughout his van and keeps it a little bit lighter on the backsplash because we do have such dark countertops. Now in his kitchen, he has a ton of storage. One, two, three, four, five, six, six drawers and three cabinets, three doors that you can open for extra storage. So there is no shortage of storage here. Now per usual, we did not build in a cooktop. We only ever do that if a client requests to have a cooktop built in, number one, because it just takes up a lot of space. Number two, they are glass and they can break if you were gonna drop something on it. So we like the option of having an induction cooktop stove stored in your drawer. You pull it out, plug it in right here, do your cooking, and then clean up, put everything away. Just seems like the most functional option so that you can keep your countertops open because you're not cooking every single day, three times a day in a van typically. A lot of clients like to go out to eat, so they're not necessarily eating in their van all the time. Or a lot of clients just like to hang out in their van, they're not even going anywhere. <laughs> they just sit in their driveway and work, which I think is awesome. You know, you got a mobile office on wheels here, so you're not always like stocking your fridge and cooking in here. It's crazy because I do feel like I'm doing this tour in reverse. We usually go from like the front door to the back door and we're coming forward this time. So up to the sink, we have a different style sink than we've done before as well here. It is like a farmhouse style, but more of a concrete finish. And then our gold faucet, this is a fan favorite of a lot of clients you'll see in probably the next two van tours. This other clients have chose the same faucet again, really nice because you can Ooh, got a little water drip in there. Shower off outside the sliding door. The hose actually reaches pretty far and you will have hot water here as well as the shower and the outdoor shower in the rear. Underneath the sink, we have a pull out trash can and recycling. This is something we also recently added to the last few vans. Just a nice feature to have that pull out trash can and somewhere to put your stuff underneath. I think that's pretty much it for the kitchen. So now moving on to our shower area. First things first, like I already mentioned, we have this beautiful stained poplar trim framing out the bathroom. We did run that all throughout for our trim because all the cabinets are white and it ties in beautifully with his custom stained poplar ceiling. And first time ever, we use the black Nautilus shower door. They actually just came out with a black version. We typically go for white. But again, in this van, we were going a little bit more bold with the style, a little bit more like retro to me. So we went with the black and no stripes, which I think just turned out very beautifully. Look at that smooth install by Alex. I always help too, so I should get a little credit there. And then inside we have this beautiful matte black tile with this other tan subway tile. There's also a matte. And then we use the gold Schluter tile trim throughout to just really finish off our corners and edges here with the toilet. This is the separate urine diverting toilet. So this goes to a tank underneath the van. You don't have to touch your pee at all or carry a little canister out to a public restroom with people staring at you, <laughs> wondering what you're doing. Um, this goes directly into a tank under the van and then if you want to go number two you put a bag in the rear and go tie it up and throw it away when you can. Uh, obviously we have a shower up top and that has a 15 gallon gray water tank underneath for just the shower. We don't ever combine a toilet and a shower gray water tank together. You'd have weird smells coming up. We do put a pee trap onto the toilet so you're not gonna get any smells coming up from that. For gray water for the sink, also on its own system, 
has an 11 gallon tank. So there are three tanks underneath the van for those three different things. Sink, toilet, shower. Up front, we have a full length closet. Up top is hanging storage. Down below, we have a shelf. So you can put your extra bags and stuff in there and all your clothes up top. And then we have a nice big headliner shelf right behind me. So this is a great place to store your window covers. Of course, I'm grabbing the biggest one. <laughs> I believe this is either a sliding door or the front. Sliding, this door. sliding door. And while we're here and talking about this, this is by our good friend, Scott. Scott was actually one of our first van life friends and my original inspiration to start van life when Alex and I lived in our van. And he now makes these awesome window covers that are in stock for sprinters. I think he just came out with transits, but don't quote me on that. He did. He did just come out with transits. Okay, thank you, Alex. So these uh, fit all of the stock windows in a sprinter. So sliding door, rear doors, front cab area. And then for our custom window frames in the back, we do still use Strawfoot because he makes custom sizes for us. Our light just died, so sorry about the change in lighting here. As I was saying, our back custom window frames that we have on both sides, we still use Strawfoot, but for all of the other windows, Wonderful hooks it up for our clients. These are amazing. They are super strong magnets. They have these nice Velcro straps, so they fold super easy and compact. And like I said, the headliner shelf is a great place to store these. So easy way to tell which way they go. There's a pattern on one side and the other side is just black and they just go right on here. Is that upside down? That's it upside is. down. That's, that's upside down. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you gotta just figure it out. Well, here's the, here's the key. You gotta look for the logo right there. I messed up guys, but they snap on super easy and make this all nice and black out. Great for sleeping again. Now I really can't see you. <laughs> again, I love a dark, dark room to sleep in. One of our clients mentioned that with these window covers, him and his son slept till like 10 a.m. one day because it was so dark in the van, they didn't even realize the sun had come up. So if you like blackout, you want your privacy, you don't want anybody seeing inside your van, be sure to check out Wonderful. We'll leave a link down below. Like I said, these are great because you can just fold them right up if I get the strap right. There we go. Okay, so these go back up here. Again, great place to store these. And we also build our trim up so there's a pretty big lip here so it's not going to come flying out when you're driving. We do have a seat swivel in the front so you can sit here and drink your coffee work on your laptop, whatever you feel like doing. We did add the T-vent window on the sliding door. So this does open for a little ventilation. Like I mentioned, we also have our vent fan and oh, we have the S-bar diesel heater underneath the passenger seat. The control is here at the end of the kitchen. Also at the end of the kitchen, we have the main lights, again, all on a dimmer. Our water pump switch, so it's super easy to access when you're gonna take a shower or use a sink. And what else am I missing? The other windows that we installed are the two fixed glass windows in the rear. Again, we do our custom window frames here and use metal stripping on the back of the window frame. So when you put your window cover in, it magnetizes to that metal strip and you're completely black out back there as well. So. Now, Alex is going to talk more about the specs of this van and all the fun stuff. Sarah did an amazing job walking you guys through the details and the finishes of this van. Personally, very, very happy with how this one turned out. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the electrical plumbing systems and all the nuanced electricals and fun stuff that we added to this van. So this van has 810 amp hours of lithium battery from Battleborn Batteries. That is three of their 270 amp hour G3, GC3 batteries. Um, that is located in this rear passenger side bench along with a 3000 watt inverter. It has 60 amps of alternator charging using two Victron Orion 30 amp chargers as well as a solar controller. It's got 300 watts of solar up on the roof. Um, and 
off of that 3000 watt inverter. We've got lots of 110 outlets around and a 120 outlet for the water heater, which is in the bench over here. It's got a two and a half gallon water heater and a 33 gallon fresh water tank. And Sarah already talked about the gray water tank system that we have mounted underneath. Um, so he's got everything he needs to really live comfortably to be able to work out of here. That's kind of his plan for this van. He's going to travel around. He has a marketing company, a consulting business. So he's going to be meeting with clients in here, which is going to be pretty cool. Pretty fun spot to do some business and break down what people want. Now let's talk about how you utilize the van. Sarah mentioned we put our control panel inside one of our upper cabinets. And we do that, like she said, so you don't have flashing lights. Like when we turn this wine guard on, there's a nice blue light that's gonna pop on. And if you wanted your wine guard on at night, um, that's gonna just be right in your eyes and bug you. Above that, we have our servo touchscreen, which controls basically the majority of the electrical components in the van. It also has the tank sensor readouts right here. So we can see fresh water is 85% full. It's got 19% in the shower and 18% in the toilet. Um, other info you can see on here is battery voltage is at 13.4. It's currently currently using 3.7 amps and his inverter, which is this AC mode is off. If we want to turn his inverter on, we simply click that to on and then we'd be able to utilize his water heater or one of the household outlets to plug in a laptop or use an induction cooktop. Um, it is also, it's an inverter charger so he can charge through his inverter. He also has the solar and for a third way of charging, he has the alternator charging. So three ways to charge his 810 amp hour battery bank. Um, so we love this touchscreen. We love this integration. Lots of fun remotes over here. He's got his remote for his toe kick LED light. He has a remote for his Dometic powered awning, which is outside and is great. And a remote for his 12 volt Dometic AC unit. Um, now to operate the awning, these do need to be mounted on a switch. So he has that switch here on this switch control panel along with three switches for ball valves underneath the van. So that is how you drain the gray water tanks. You simply open this. That's gonna uh, open an actuator on the ball valve and drain the tank. And then when he's drained, you can simply close it. So easy peasy way to drain your tanks. We added a lot of fun stuff to the outside of this van. Like usual, a lot of Illumines components. This is a 170 extended 3500, like Sarah said. So we have the Illumines double loop low profile roof rack. We added a 30 inch rigid light bar to the front. And we also added rigid spotlights on every side of the van. On the passenger side, we did put a 13 foot Dometic power awning. It's the 9500 powered awning from Dometic. Um, we'll show you guys that and love that it's going on our next van um, It's just so cool not to have to have any vertical stabilizers on the driver's side We have the Illumines high roof side ladder along with the surf pole and a set of surf hooks so that he can throw a stand-up paddleboard on there because he does live in North Idaho and uh, Eastern Washington where there's a lot of lakes available for him on top of the roof You can also see the Dometic 12 volt AC unit vent fan 150 uh, watt solar panels. We have two of those. So he's got 300 watts of solar total and the wine guard uh, cell phone and Wi-Fi booster. That's one of our favorite uh, components to put on top because it boosts your Wi-Fi. It can create its own cell signal. It boosts your cell signal. It can create its own Wi-Fi signal. And if you are somewhere like a campground that has Wi-Fi, you can log into their Wi-Fi and actually boost their Wi-Fi through your unit in your van. So maybe you wouldn't regularly have good Wi-Fi service, but then you would. Um, also up here in the front, he has his aux beam controller. So we talked about the exterior lights. This is how he can turn on his light bar, his side rear. Um, and then we also added rock lights underneath on the passenger side so that at night, um, he's got a few music festivals he's planning on going to. That's gonna be a really nice mood lighting for him. So that it's gonna be fun to hang out outside of the van without having like a big overhead spotlight um, coming down on you and we didn't do anything on the rear doors this time because he is primarily a solo traveler. He has so much storage space inside the van. He didn't need anything on the outside. Um, at the back of the van, we do have a nice accent detail uh, with the same sort of poplar slats that we did on the ceiling. Running vertically back there is a nice design element. He does have the outdoor shower with hot and cold water um, out the back as well as his U bench storage like we always build into our vans where he can access his fill to fill his tank out of the back of the vehicle for his 33 gallon freshwater tank 
And again, if you watched our videos, our van tours, we don't like cutting things into the outside of the van. So his shore power connection is actually underneath the van. It's back um, on the passenger side. So you can easily plug in to shore power to charge his batteries if he needed to. But again, he's got a really big battery bank, lots of solar and alternator charging. So he's probably not gonna have to do that very often. So last couple of things that we wanted to mention were the truck bed treatments that we did on the lower rear panels and below, all the way around the front and the back. And then we also do the roof with a color match that just protects your roof from rust down the line. Yep. And, and because this is the rare super single, there's only one aftermarket wheel you can actually get for it. Um, it's an ultra aftermarket wheel. It looks really nice, nice matte black finish. And so he does have those as well as the Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires, which came in handy today because we got snow last night for yeah. up here today where we were filming. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's gonna have to drive it home, so he's gonna need those. <laughs> we did do a suspension upgrade in this van. We swapped out the rear leaf pack for a heavy-duty leaf pack. Um, we also beefed up the rear shocks. Um, because it is a rear-wheel drive, it doesn't have front shocks, but we did beef up the rear shocks, the suspension, and added the two-inch lift from Van Compass. So looks like a four by four, drives great, handles really well, and he has tons of clearance at the back. So what was your favorite thing about this van? My favorite thing about this van, the, so we've been affectionately referring to this van in the shop as the man van. Um, we build a lot of light and bright and lots of white. We have lots of clients come and they go through their design process and everything white, 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 which is great. And we get that. We did that for our first two vans we built for ourselves. And that's because it does help keep it nice and bright and it makes it feel really big and spacious on the inside. But I love that he let us kind of, he doesn't know what this van is going to look like, by the way, finished. We stopped sending him progress pictures right before we did the tile and all of the extra trim that's stained. Um, so he's going to be able to see it when I pick him up at the airport tomorrow. But uh, I love the way that all that turned out, especially the window frames with this fabric that is very retro that he picked. Um, if you knew our client, this is very much his style. It's very cool. So it's cool to see a van that I feel like really represents who our client is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I had the idea to do the stained window frames and asked him if that was okay. And he was like, oh yeah, I love that. So that was fun because we've actually been wanting to do stained window frames for a client for a while, but you know, ultimately it's up to the client saying yes to it. And so we finally had someone say yes to it. And in a, our next van that you'll probably see soon, we're doing white oak window frames, yeah. which look so pretty. I can't wait to show you guys those. So and one getting client clients, came and saw this and, and now it. they want it. Yeah. Everything else is going to be very white in their van, but they want the stain. That's what I'm saying. What people want what they've yeah. seen in the past. And a lot of our vans have been all white and clients haven't really wanted to branch out. So it's exciting now that we've built so many vans, people can see something different and decide to go down that road and do something different than the all white look so yeah because we did stain trim up in the front around the bathroom and we also did all of the cleating and trim on the bed bench down here in the stain trim as well also from like a durability standpoint this is going to hold up better in the sense that you're not it's not going to get as dirty as white trim especially in the bench area all the trim at the bottom, you know, it's extra cleaning that clients have to do and they're aware of that when they go all white or if they do shaker style fronts, they are aware there's a little bit more cleaning involved to make it look pretty over time. Um, so it's nice when you do the flat fronts and you add some more wood details in here because it will just help the van stay clean and durable for years to come. So okay, you it go. is functional. What's your favorite thing? And then I have like another favorite thing and then maybe you have another favorite thing. There's a lot I really like about this van. Uh, my favorite thing is the poplar wood trim everywhere. Not just the window frames, but the, I love the, how the bathroom turned out and doing the black Nautilus shower door up front, I think just ties in overall because we have the black countertops, we have the black you know gap in between the ceiling, the black yeah. lights. Kind of just running with that like black and gold theme everywhere and the black tile in there. You say his bathroom, just the tile, that was yeah, going to be my next thing. Yeah, that turned out really nicely, which actually the tan subway tile in there, I picked out because the tile he originally had picked, we couldn't get. Um, it was going to be like six months or something. It was back ordered. So I found that one and I actually, we were all kind of bummed, but I think that one turned out better because it has a little variation to yeah. it versus the other one was just plain matte tan. Same, same, same. All the tile really worked. I love the backsplash. I love the bathroom with the black feature wall. Yeah. 
and the black countertops. I, yeah. That was my next thing. Black countertops, and then we did a concrete farmhouse sink that we've never yeah. done before. Yeah, which was a good find by me. <sighs> by you. <laughs> Turned out great. All in all, though, I do just love this floor plan. This is our extended beach house layout. Again, most of our clients nowadays are really just going all for the beach house layout because it is so functional. The only time we typically design something else is if there's something we need to work around, like a large dog crate, which you will see in our next van tour. Yeah. Um, some people opt for the full-time bed, platform bed back here because they don't want to make their bed. But all in all, making your bed at night takes about, Alex says five minutes, I say two, but he was the one that usually did it. It's two minutes work for her. <laughs> because you do have to remove this pedestal, put this table down on the cleats, Get your fill in piece, which, oh, we didn't Are you going to time me? Are you going to time me? We should do it and you should time me. Okay, maybe we'll do that. And then bring all the cushions together. We still recommend putting a sheet on so you'll have to pull out your bedding from an upper cabinet. It's typically where we kept ours. Put the sheets on, get your blanket out, you know, get all comfy cozy. But the great thing is with this layout, you can keep it in bed mode. You don't have to make this into table mode all the time. Alex and I typically would keep it in bed mode if we were like, driving long distances one day, or just felt like having more of a lazy day and watching Netflix, which we never get to do anymore <laughs> because we have two toddlers. <laughs> it was different back then. It was. I miss those days. Yeah, it was fun. Our kids are adorable. We love our kids. Don't think anything different. <laughs> we do. They're the best. Um, so, Van turned out great. Super excited. He's flying in tomorrow to pick it up. I'm going to film a little bit of the I don't think we I think even mentioned, though, pick up. That, that this was actually our van. We did buy this van with the intention of building it out for us, but Corey is actually a friend of ours. We've known him from when we used to live in Coeur d'Alene. Um, Corey and I were in a business networking group actually when we bought our first van and broke our lease on our house in Coeur d'Alene. And he was very supportive, which was cool at the mm -hmm. time. And he reached out like two years ago asking about us building a van for him. And then the timing wasn't quite right for him. And then he reached out and we had this van mm -hmm. and it was kind of, I felt perfect for him. So I said, here's your van. And he said, okay. And then, uh, yeah, now it's going to be his to travel around and run his marketing company with. And I think it's going to be really cool for him. I'm excited for him to experience it um, the way that we did, which mm -hmm. is cool. Just better because this van's better than our first two were for sure. Uh, way better. Yeah. So thank you for watching this van tour. Cannot believe we've built 23 vans and we have another one finished that we're going to film the van tour next week. Yeah, so real quick, we haven't posted a lot of van tours because we kind of have this thing going where we finish like four at a time and then we're working on other ones and we're about to finish four at a time. Yeah. So stay tuned because there's going to be this one and then three others coming out really yeah. quick. Yeah, we have four vans for pickup, two this month, two next month. So lots of fun content coming soon. And we're finally building our own van, which is going to be the family van, the OG family van layout with the Happy Jack. So we're excited about that. And thank you to our team. Yeah. Our guys kick butt. We have three awesome guys, full-time and a part-time guy. So Beach, Clark, Kevin, and Willie, thank you guys so much. You guys do incredible work. It's been so much fun to work with you. Um, I doubt they're going to watch it this far, but yes, thank we'll you We'll see guys. if they do. And also our buddy Ryan at Tracks Customs, who yeah. does all of our suspension wheels, tires, and exterior. And you got to mention Kayla because she takes care of our children. And Kayla, so. who's raising our children for us. <laughs> thank you so much. They're great. Thank you. <laughs> so we will be back soon with some new van tours, and we're getting back into content this year. So... If you have any video requests, leave them down in the comment section below, and we will see you guys next time. Doodaloos. Bye bye. Bye. See All right, who's 24. getting out first? Me. See, this is the great thing about this table. Yep. We'll shove in here and get oh. out.